Now, from this short presentation, you will learn the life cycle of a Java server page. You will learn both the life cycle phases as well as the life cycle methods. Under the life cycle phases, although there are six phases, only two of them are new because the rest four are the same phases that a servlet has. The first two phases are translation and compilation. A JSP page internally is a servlet. It gets translated into a servlet class by the JSP container or the JSP engine. Then the JSP engine compiles that servlet class into a dot class file into bytecode. The rest four phases are same. Instantiation wherein the class will be loaded into memory and instantiated. Initialization wherein the JSP init method of a JSP is called. Unlike servlets where the init method is called. Servicing is where the J underscore JSP service method is called by the JSP container. And then in destruction, the JSP destroy method is called by the container. So there are only three methods, JSP init, underscore JSP service, JSP destroy, which will be called in that order. As you know, the JSP init and JSP destroy method are called only once, just like in the servlets. Only when the first request comes in, all these will be executed. From the second request on, only the underscore JSP method or the servicing phase is invoked. So total six phases, translation, compilation, instantiation, initialization, servicing and destruction. And the methods are JSP init, underscore JSP service, JSP destroy. You can ask me how does the JSP container know if you go and change the JSP page, will it translate it and compile it again? Yes, it does. At run time, if you go change the JSP page on the server, Dynamically, the JSP container keeps a timestamp of the JSP page when it was created in memory and when somebody changes it and when a user request comes in, it will compare the timestamp it has in memory when it translated and compiled for the first time to the timestamp of that file on the file system currently. If the timestamp of the file on the file system is greater, then it will again do the translation and compilation, otherwise it won't, it will just start doing the instantiation initialization for the first set and then only the servicing from then on unless you go change it. So it's as simple as that once you have the servlet background learning JSPs is quite easy. The two additional phases are translation and compilation wherein the translation the JSP container is going to translate the JSP into a servlet Java file and then the compilation wherein it's converted into a bytecode or a class file. If you want to override these methods, you are welcome to do the overriding of JSP init and JSP destroy inside your declaration block, which you learned from the JSP elements uh, presentation. That's it for now. Take care.